it was a heartbreaking moment, as if youth had vanished in the blink of an eye. This was the image that closed out the intense 120 minutes between Portugal and France in the legendary quarterfinal clash. Pepe cried his eyes out, while Ronaldo embraced his comrade, his brother in arms. The embrace of a 41-year-old and a 39-year-old, both of whom had run tirelessly in the past five matches. But in the end, they couldn't overcome the cruelty of football and the ruthlessness of time. Ronaldo, Pepe and Portugal are officially out of Euro 2024 at the quarterfinal stage after a fateful penalty shootout with France. Ronaldo stepped up to take the first penalty, and he scored. But this time, Diogo Costa didn't need to be a penalty-saving Superman to make up for Jean-Félix's lone miss. France, with their ruthless pragmatism, have booked their place in the semi-finals. That heartbreaking image is truly cruel and terrifying. So how did Ronaldo's painful farewell unfold after 120 fateful minutes at the Wolfsburg Stadium? All will be revealed in today's video. Ronaldo was right in the thick of it, and the question that has been on everyone's mind surrounding the Portuguese national team in recent days finally has an answer. Despite the doubts surrounding Ronaldo after his penalty miss and lackluster performances, Coach Roberto Martinez seemed to have placed his absolute trust in the 39-year-old superstar. On the contrary, conservative person like Didier Deschamps suddenly had two changes in the French team. Randall Colomwani and Eduardo Camavinga both started, bringing a breath of fresh air to lead blows. But their performances had been unimpressive for a long time. As the lights came on at the Wolfsburg Stadium, Ronaldo and Mbappe led their two powerful armies out of the tunnel. It was a battle, a changing of the guard, as no one can defeat time. If Mbappe helped France overcome the quarterfinal hurdle, it would also be the day Ronaldo ended his final chapter at the Euros. Ronaldo's determination and desire wouldn't allow that to happen easily. The 39-year-old quickly showed that he had overcome the shock of his penalty miss against Slovenia. With energetic runs early in the match, as soon as referee Michael Oliver blew the whistle, Portugal, also the home team, took the initiative to push France back into their own half. Bruno Fernandes and Bernardo Silva, Portugal's two top attacking midfielders, continuously delivered dangerous crosses. But all were neutralized by Ibrahima Konate, rising star for France. He stood like a towering inferno in the heart of the French defense. The Arsenal defender also blocked a dangerous long-range effort from Bruno Fernandes. After a somewhat subdued first 20 minutes, Les Bleus began to assert themselves and create chances on Diego Costa's goal. The Portuguese goalkeeper had to make two consecutive saves from Theo Hernandez and, most notably, Kylian Mbappe. Didn't take long for Mbappe to show his threat on the left wing. 24-year-old, whose speed and technique are among the best in the world, showed off his skills again in the 28th minute. On speed down the flank made even an F1 car like Nuno Mendes eat his dust. But unfortunately, neither Anton Griezmann nor Camavinga could capitalize on the opportunity immediately after. While Mbappe had made his presence felt, the other protagonist of the highly anticipated encounter, Ronaldo, remained as quiet as Lord Tom Jensen. The determination was there, but CR7's legs, burdened by age, no longer obeyed his commands. In the first half, the 39-year-old forward did not have a single shot on Mikhailo Mudrik's goal. On also had very few touches, and whenever the ball came to Ronaldo's feet, he was met with Saliba's tight marking. The ravages of time on CR7 were most evident in the 35th minute when the 39-year-old veteran tried his best to break through, couldn't, because Saliba was shielding the ball too well. This scene was envisioned before the match, a duel without precedent between a 39-year-old veteran and a monster of the modern game, only 23 years old this year. As the first half whistle blew, Ronaldo and Mbappe both walked briskly into the tunnel, as if preparing for something. And the fans were eager to see a more exciting second half, worthy of the nature of a super classic quarterfinal clash. Three hours earlier, Spain and Germany had played out a thrilling encounter that kept everyone on the edge of their seats, in stark contrast to the cagey approach displayed by France and Portugal. Not to disappoint, the two giants brought much more excitement in the second half. France were the first to fire a shot, and it came from the dancing feet of their main attacker, Kylian Mbappe. 
Portugal responded quickly with Rafael Leao's pace on the wing and Ronaldo's threat in the box. In the 53rd minute, it seemed like the European Silicao had taken the lead, but Mike Mignon was simply outstanding. The AC Milan goalkeeper denied Bernardo Silva's close-range effort, then quickly adjusted his position to save Ronaldo's rebound. Just three minutes later, it was France's turn to have a golden opportunity when they exploited Portugal's right flank. Position, the angle, and the shot were exactly the same as the iconic moment in the 2022 World Cup final. And once again, the young Kolo Muani missed in an incredibly unfortunate manner. But if Muani's miss was a 10 out of 10, Kamavinga's shot just four minutes later was a 100 out. From a distance of only about five meters in front of the goal, unmarked by anyone, Real Madrid star sent his shot wide, leaving the French players holding their heads in disbelief. Both France and Portugal showed that they wanted to find a goal to end the battle in 90 minutes but a series of precious chances were squandered. From Liao and Bernardo Silva to Kolo Muani and Kamavinga. As the stars took turns to shine, the two figures who had been the center of attention, Ronaldo and Mbappe, showed signs of fading. For some reason, the Euros seemed to be an unsolvable puzzle for Mbappe. While Ronaldo's story was much easier to understand, age no longer allowed the 39-year-old veteran to be the superhero he once was. Two substitutions came, fitting end to a tense battle that had been predicted before him. The home team maintained their intention to show during the 90 minutes that they were not a team that wanted to enter a penalty shootout. The European Selecao players still pushed up the squad to find a goal in the tense 30 minutes of the second half. In the 93rd minute, a thousand echoes occurred. Silva and substitute Kosikao did the hardest work before crossing into the box towards Rwanda's position. But at the last touch, CR7's shot sailed over the bar. That point was Rwanda of the peak. The ending for the goalkeeper, the opposing team, certainly could only be to go into the net to pick up the ball. But at the Wolfsburg Stadium last night was CR7 at the age of 39, a man who is struggling to keep his youth in love. Contrary to the home team's spirit, the French were very calm in the second half, with a clear intention of dragging the opponent into a penalty shootout. They had reason to do this because at the end of the first half, their biggest star, Bappe, Bappe had to leave the field because his nose was in pain again. Finally, coach Charles Deschamps succeeded in bringing the home team into the lucky game. People still doubted this plan of the French team because on the other side of the line was a Diego Costa who had just exploded in a penalty shootout with Slovenia. The first rounds of shots by European Silesia and Rwanda were completed without a scratch. One, two of the next three shots were also successfully executed by both sides that the goalkeeper had no chance to save. But the turning point came in the third round. John Felix became the culprit with a shot that hit the post. That moment, when the star of Sion bowed his head and the home team fans were shocked. People immediately thought of what would happen to them. In the decisive penalty, Theo Hernandez did not make any mistakes to help France officially advance. The home team had reached the pinnacle of glory in 2016 thanks to Rwando's goals and Pepe's selfless efforts. But eight years later, they no longer had enough strength to carry the team, and the French successfully repaid this cruel debt. Three goals, one penalty, and two own goals. Persistent and extremely common. That's the way for Le Bleu to be in the final. And sadly, the moment the French won was also the moment that marked Cristiano Ronaldo's last Euro.